You're gonna love him. Let's go absolutely crazy for Eden Kwan. Okay, um, today my talk, the topic is called Rendering the Invisible Set the Color Master Force. Uh, it has nothing to do with it, it's just a placeholder. So, next slide. Uh, I got so some real here. So I just like to put on an agenda here. So I'm going to talk about who am I and uh, about the loser and how it started, what we do and why we do it. I'm not going to lie. The whole, whole talk is all about self-promotion. Right? I'm going to show a lot of the work that we've done, and that's it. If you can learn something out of it, that would be awesome, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Next. All right. I think it's good to sort of give a little bit of um, self-introduction. My name is Eden Kwan, and I am the founder of Luzon, all right? So, um, I love AI. Next up, all right, back in the day when I was in Hong Kong, I used to be a contract singer, all right? But however, I didn't know how to swing, uh, sing, not swing. I didn't know how to sing, all right? But in a group of four, so you're kind of okay, you don't need to sing. You just need to pose, fold the up time, all right, cool. All right, and that's it. All right, I, I know a lot of like, celebrity in Hong Kong and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. But however, I couldn't make any money. So I did a little side hustle and started becoming my full creative uh, career. So uh, I started to make some money making Flash website. Um, this is my first award-winning website. Uh, it's myself. You know, I love myself so much. I put myself up there in my portfolio. So it's back in the 2011. It was, uh, it was a thing, Flash. Since then, and I, uh, I, I, I have a few years of full-time working experience, and then um, start to make HTML website. Then um, I did a lot of freelance work. I did the first uh, 3D immersive experience uh, using CSS with the WebGL. So I'm not just working with WebGL, just so you know. Back in 2013. All right. So I think it's about time to talk about how did I start our studio, right? My, my studio called Luzon. Um, any freelancer here who want to start a studio? All right, I, okay, I'm gonna give you some tips here. All you need to do, the first thing first, all right, you put your awesome you know, freelancer profile here, change all the I into we. <laughs> all in a sudden, you're no longer just a designer. You're also a developer. You are a project manager. You are your HR department, <laughs> accounting team. All right, this is how it works. So when, next time, when you talk to your client, all right, so when they ask you some developer question, you as a designer, all you need to do is just say, let me talk to my dev team. I will get back to you later. All right? <laughs> That's how it works. Change the perspective of how people see you. Next thing is very easy. All right, in our experience. Um, you know, works mean nothing when you don't do some action. So all you need to do is just make, your, make the website looks bigger than just one individual. So that's how I started. I make a, just simply make a website, one of the month on award, and that's it. Then project come to you. Very simple, right? Easy. Um, <laughs> so this whole thing teach me one thing. It's just like, uh, fake it till you make it. I think a lot of people like talk about it, fake it till you make it. Basically, my whole entire career is started with fake it till you make it. So this is a good example. Okay, all right. So um, it was hap uh, it happened early this year. Uh, we got reached out by a media company called Wallpaper. They want us to do a two-minute uh, shot film for a company called Porsche. 
is a car company, apparently. Um, <laughs> the M portal is gonna display in this awesome uh, places, like LED places, uh, screens, and big, big space, like in London, it's a four-story high, 360 view, and stuff like this. But the fun fact is that we've never done a single CG film before. We've never done things like this. All right, but for some reason, they thought that we can do it. How awesome is that, right? <laughs> oh, okay, so they want us to single bid this guy, so let's do it. So after the budget, okay, well, so what is the timeline, right? The clients say, okay, that's a three weeks for dozen. Not just three weeks dozen, they want three weeks creative concept and dozen. We were like, fuck, can great opportunity, right? You know, it's awesome. So it's a great thing that we can try something new. Let's do it. So internally, we have like um, a free Houdini artist, including myself, uh, but we use Houdini for non-CG stuff. We make website with that. So quickly, um, we... Uh, okay, we, uh, we assemble a team internally, three of us, and then we hire a freelancer in the state and another freelancer in Philippines. So we can non-stop working on and, and this project <laughs> all right, for three whole weeks. So, and then we learn some new stuff like render farm and stuff like this. It's really awesome, fun thing to work with. And uh, that's how we... Ah. Oh, no. All right, at the end, we, we made it, all right? So I also get a chance to talk on stage um, to the audience in a live, live event as a creative director. So that's how you fake it till you make it, right? Good example. Next, back to our studio promotion, all right? <laughs> I got to keep talking about the stuff that we do. So uh, we, uh, at Lucent, we do a lot of microsite, campaign, immersive experience, data visualization, as well as uh, genetic art. Also, we do VR, AR experience for different brand and, um, and company. Okay. As a studio, we always like to try new things. Um, two years ago, I started something called monthly experiment. So we believe that if we try something new, put it out there, maybe it's people in the, I mean, maybe the brand in, as interested in what we are doing, they will find us to do the job. Uh, do the work. So the first thing we do is, come on. All right, it's got a dozen. I think it's a cool idea that it, what if we do a crowd simulation to let the user control a thousand, thousand of, um, I'm sorry, control the spaceship to suck those people in and kill them all right away. I think it can, it's a good business idea, right? So we did that. Unfortunately, we didn't get anything from, uh, you know, inquiry from that. So we tried something different. I'll leave back a little bit. Oh, skipped it once, sorry. So we did something a little bit more kids friendly. We uh, did this interactive storybook for kids. Oh, it looks really cool. You can, there's a URL over there. You can remember that. Okay. Uh, after that, we think that it's good to sort of like hit the automobile industry. So let's do a car customizer. It's another one. Then we also got, what about fashion? Let's do an interactive fashion show, generic fashion show. Things like this, that's cool. What about movie? All right, let's make something creepy, weird stuff. Maybe some movie company. Anyone work at Netflix here? No? OK, that's cool. Next. <laughs> and we also make video game. Our video game is fun, right? So um, we work on this. Experience that allow people to create their own uh, toy track and share with your friends. However, we didn't even want a side of the day at award. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> All right, whatever. Okay. Next, we also use AI. All right, AI is hit this day, this year. So we use AI to generate a lot of assets, create an AI-driven experience that using in-painting or old-school Photoshop layering technique, also some AI voiceover, create this AI video game, storytelling experience. And there's a problem. The clients start to ask a question, do you guys know how to make a normal website? <laughs> no problem. So we did a labs.lucent.co, labs.lucent.co, okay, labs.lucent.co, all right? <laughs> So it has all the experiment that we've done, we put all in there, so that's really cool. And 
I think it's time to sort of do a little bit of quick giveaway, not just talk about ourselves. So have anyone seen the new Lucent website? I didn't hear anything, so let's talk about it. All right. Okay, so um, the first thing first, like you need to make it look sassy, right? So if you make something looks good, it's halfway there. So let's talk about the homepage visual. All right, this is an early prototype. It looks cool, but it's pretty lame, right? Like we use some sphere, put it there. A lot of people did it before. So if we try something different, okay? We try different shape and colors. It still looks bad. It's really bad. So, but we saw some element looks good. So we take it out there and we start the whole thing, wipe it out, and we start from scratch. So, pick what works for you and then build on top of that. That's just something take away, right? I teach you guys something. Not just talk about our website, but anyway, anyway. So, a little bit boring stuff. I'll talk about PBR rendering. So, first of all, you need to have a base color. Then you have a matcap rendering. So, it's a little take away for a developer. All right. Actually, you can separate the diffuse term and the specular term, so you can be a little bit more flexible on rendering and stuff like this. Then we introduce something called self-shadowing. Uh, self self all right, self-shadowing. <laughs> so it's how, how it works. It's like it's a technique that we pre-bake the shadows. On the right side, you normally people, see people do to pre-bake the ambient occlusion and then add some real-time lighting. It looks cool, but on the left, whoa, you see the nice, nice, nice. Soft shadow there. That's where it comes from. And then if we put, put the lights in the back, you see the event going there. All you need to do is just like, very simple, just like extract the data, do the ambient occlusion on 16 size, and then like, you know, put it all together in real time. Easy, <laughs> easy, right? OK, what's next? And then we have a neighbor AO and then the shadow, so which is like using some analytical way to do uh, shad real time shadowing and then uh, ML occlusion. Then, ooh, global illumination. All you need to do is just uh, take the ML occlusion and then um, do a different floor off, then that's it. Hala. Then you have a, uh, do a little bit of ray tracing. Simple, just ray trace it. Then you have a dynamic scene. Let's have a look. Look at that. It's a real time random website. It works on your mobile. You can check it out right now. <laughs> All right. That's cool, that's cool. I think I still have some time. I think I rushed through it, but anyway. Next. So, other than that, you need to make something breaking the boundary. So how it works, all right? Let's take our website as an example, all right? So I think it's a good idea. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. If, we, if the user scroll to this page, we go inside. Like, you know, you see a lot of websites go this way. You scroll down and move left a little bit, scroll down, move left a little bit. Uh, try something different, all right? Okay. So, all right, how are we gonna do it? We, be, uh, we decided to do something like, you know, Beepo style, VJ loop kind of stuff. Like, you know, this kind of grid structure is very nice. And then we can easily do an uh, infinite, like, uh, navigation uh, structure. So we can keep repeating the whole thing nonstop and stuff like this. So we use some instancing technique to make it like a very uh, efficient and very small file size, and then it looks pretty good. Next, all right, you want to do some trippy stuff, then we need to do something a little bit more interesting. So we flow in some kind of like a 4D tra um, transformation. It's called a Mobius transform. Uh, so it looks like this. It's pretty tri trippy stuff. Right, I think that's cool. I don't know. I, as a coder, I like to throw in something I think that's cool, and that's it. I don't care about what other people think. But anyway, next step, I think this, uh, some people may be interested if there's some creative coder here. So here, I use a uh, blooming technique. Okay, you can see some spiky looking um, bloom effect on those uh, shiny areas. So use something core. FFT convolution bloom. So it's core. Uh, it's a very expensive uh, operation. It's core. Uh, FFT stands for fast Fourier transform, which is like um, basically convert the image signal into some sort of like sine cosine wave. So it can easily mix the kernel, which is the star shape, together, and then do the invert FFT, and that's it. Easy, simple. But I think like I haven't seen a lot of people use this technique. I think that's good to sort of like, talk about it. I think it's cool. Next. You cannot break the boundary without actually breaking the boundary. You cannot break something, right? So we do a simulation in Houdini and chuck it there in the, in the WebGL. So this is why it is. Oh, look at that.
Voila! You gotta do something funny, right? All right, okay. Let's work together. What's next? All right, I think there's one thing that, like, you know, uh, it's very important is keep your personality. Uh, you know, you, you gotta devise something unique, all right? Not just making an other magazine looking website, all right? Just so you know, please don't do it. Next, okay, cinematic experience is in our core of uh, the work that we do. We, we do a lot of cinematic stuff. So we try to push the boundary of these things, okay? Ah, uh, a little bit too technical. I think I'm gonna skip that. So this standard is called Vossel-based um, ambient occlusion. It's all inspired by Vossel Cone Tracing. It's a, gaming, a game dev technique to do uh, uh, sort of real-time global illumination, but I use it as a, to do the ambient occlusion for a particle. All right? No one's interested. I can see that. That's fine. Next one. This one. Oh, that's more interesting. We talk about shadow map. OK? Shadow map is something that you do shadow in the real-time uh, application on a video game. So we do a single, uh, do a custom pass to do a single point light shadow map. Then you can see the soft, soft shadow from on the ground. It looks pretty cool, isn't it? All right, cool. Next, that is a very important thing. AI technology, right? So a lot of people talk about AI before. I also use AI to hide my really muscular body to put some clothes on myself. That's the most important thing, all right? I don't want to be, you know, to expose myself out there. And then I convert the image uh, using a tool called ClipJob to convert it into surface normal and then depth information. And then I do something called blue noise uh, tripling uh, algorithm to move the point cloud into uh, some sort of electron way to distribute that, to make it look more nicer, all right? Then we create this face. All right, this is the workflow of that page. All right, I don't know why there's no music. Maybe I forgot to put it there. But anyway, so look at the shadow. Ah, oh, look at the lighting. Ah, all right. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's very much. Wait. Oh, you can change the face. I change it back. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool, isn't it? Wow. Look at that. Look at my face. I told you that I love myself. I always see myself there. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, ooh. I still have five minutes. <laughs> I didn't expect that I would run through that, that quickly. So, last point I want to talk about is the attention to details. I think I don't need to say it. Like, you know, it's very important to talk about, like, you know, um, you care about the details of everything. You need to show that to your clients, for that as a client, that you know, you know your stuff. All right. So these things lead to mouse over, more over effect. It took us uh, two days to work on. <laughs> so I think that's a good idea. What if, when the user roll over the image, the card, we do a mechanical camera focus and defocus, you know, sort of like when you try to move your camera, try to get a focus thing. I think that's pretty cool. I don't know. I don't really see any people looks. Yeah. OK, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. OK. Uh, and also, we do something like, um, you know, as some motion blur, uh, some, some um, you know, you know, like these days, like when you see a CG render, they like to put the shadow of the plants or some window shadow and stuff like this. We add those that, that, uh, things there. All right. It's a lot of spit on it. I think, like, Everyone do it these days. It's just like on the screen, you like to have some interactive element, just like as some uh, painting effect. I think it's cool. That's it. Actually, whoa, I still have four minutes, 420. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, no. Uh, so I hope you, you, you learn something out of it. And the most important thing here on these slides, do you know what is it? There's a website over there, <laughs> OK? All right, you can just go to the website and you can see all the amazing stuff. And if you know some brand, they want to build something that looks amazing, you can just you know, refer them to us. Very simple. All right, I think that's it. All right? <laughs> cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Eden Quo!